welcome to our study tonight. Happy that you're able to join with us. Uh, we'll be concluding our look at the journeys, uh, missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul tonight. And uh, we've been uh, all over the uh, world with him over there. And uh, we'll conclude this tonight and uh, move on to something else next week. And uh, so I just hope that you have received some uh, insight, perhaps that you didn't have before, uh, and that uh, this has been uh, uh, not just instructional, but uh, also a blessing spiritually to you. Be before we begin, we do want to pray and ask that uh, the Lord would uh, continue to bless our pastor, David Nichols. Um, many of you out there are, are praying for him, and many that are watching us are praying for him, and uh, he still needs uh, the prayer support of everyone that, uh, that knows him, and so we just ask you to continue to join us in prayer for uh, Pastor David, and also uh, Sister Jackie Phelps from our church is in the hospital, and uh, she is battling with cancer. Uh, she was in the uh, ICU for a while, but I learned that today she is out of the ICU, but she is in the cancer center downtown. So uh, keep Jackie in your prayers. Brother Dan uh, Rowe from our church has been sick, uh, but we understand uh, from uh, Sister Marianne, uh, Mary Ellen that he is better today. And we're thankful for that. So we just ask you to continue to hold Brother Dan up in prayer tonight as well. Many others at our church that are in need of prayer, Brother Keith, Griffin, one of our longtime members, uh, and uh, we just ask you to pray for him uh, and uh, uh, all the others that uh, that we couldn't begin to mention all of them here tonight, but just say a special prayer for Church Alive and the members there and the people there that uh, God would give them grace and, and strengthen their bodies and strengthen them in spirit tonight. Uh, Brother David's family, we want to continue to hold them up in prayer. Sister Laganda, Brother Sister Webb, their daughter Erica and their, her children. Uh, just uh, continue to lift them up in, in prayer. And so as we go to the Lord tonight, we want to pray that uh, this lesson tonight will be a, a blessing to you. That uh, something that we uh, present to you tonight will uh, stay with you and help you to better understand uh, some of the things that the Apostle Paul went through as he traveled uh, in the work of the Lord. So join with me, please, in prayer. Father, we come into your presence tonight. We thank you for this opportunity we have once again to come uh, into the living rooms of our uh, many people tonight and to uh, present to them this lesson. And we just ask you, God, that you would touch lives tonight. We pray for the sick, Lord. We've mentioned some of them here tonight. And we just ask you to touch them, Lord, and give them strength in their bodies and healing, Lord. And we just ask you to be with our pastor as he continues his uh, struggle. We know, God, that you are with him. Your grace is sufficient for him. And we're trusting you for his complete uh, healing in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, just be with him. And we ask you now, Lord, as we go into this lesson, that you will open up the word to our people tonight. Let them receive something from you, Lord, that they maybe have not been uh, fully aware of in the past. Or maybe uh, just bring it back to their uh, remembrance tonight. Lord, we just thank you for this study and ask you to bless each one now. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As we are beginning also, as you're coming online, we ask you to uh, like, uh, do a like and a share and uh, share this with other people that are in your friends' uh, contacts on your uh, Facebook page that they too will uh, be able to, to look at this. And uh, we uh, appreciate the comments that you've made in the, uh, the last couple of months that we've been doing this. And uh, any comments you would like to make uh, after this tonight or during this uh, uh, broadcast, we just encourage you to do so. And uh, prayer requests that you might have that you'd like the church to help you pray about, you can include those in your comments as well. So with that, let's take a look now at the third missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. And Antioch, again now, is the uh, uh, starting point for this uh, third missionary journey. This uh, trip that Paul is uh, taking now is believed to have taken place between 52 and 57 A.D. Uh, that helps 
may help you a little bit on uh, putting it in context as to when these took place. Uh, and so Paul was uh, able on this uh, third journey to visit many of the locations that he had uh, gone to on his first and second uh, trips. Uh, he used the opportunity as he went to these uh, locations to encourage those local churches. Uh, he had established them, uh, set them in order, you might say. And so he was there to encourage them uh, to continue in their endeavor to spread the gospel that he had preached to them. It wasn't Paul's gospel that he went preaching. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what he wanted them to continue to do. So on this journey, he first went through the regions of Galatia and uh, Phrygia. He was able to strengthen all the disciples in those areas. He was able to meet with them, encourage them, and uh, give them uh, a hope for uh, the work that they were uh, left to do. From there, then, he went to Ephesus in Asia. If you remember from our study last week when Paul was uh, in Ephesus the last time, uh, he was getting ready to leave. The people were wanting him to stay. They, they tried their best to get him to stay a little bit longer with them, but he told them that uh, he had to leave, but that he would come back if the Lord wills. So he was uh, now able to fulfill that promise that he made to them that uh, he would come back. Uh, some of the disciples in the area knew about the ministry of John the Baptist, but they did not know of Jesus Christ. Apollos had taught them, but he himself did not know about Jesus until Priscilla and Aquila taught him. Now, Priscilla and Aquila, we talked about them a little bit last week. They were a husband and wife who had traveled with Paul to Ephesus. But he, they stayed there after Paul left to return to Jerusalem. So now Paul was able to go back and teach those who did not know about the ministry of Jesus. Uh, there were many of them. Uh, that uh, they knew John the Baptist, they heard about him, perhaps they had read things about him, but uh, for some reason they had not heard anything about the ministry of Jesus himself. And so Paul was able to do that. And for three months there in Ephesus, Paul uh, preached and taught in the synagogue. He taught and proclaimed the word of God boldly. Uh, that's one thing you could say about the Apostle Paul. He was not shy in anything he did. Before he became a, a, a believer, uh, he was uh, very uh, uh, outgoing and very boisterous and very uh, enthusiastic about the work that he was doing for the government. And so uh, he, per he persecuted the church. Uh, he, when he was on his way to Damascus, uh, he had letters with him. They were arrest warrants, what we would call them today, to bring back uh, Christians that he found in Damascus, and they would be tried and possibly be put to death. And so that was the journey he was on then, but now he's on a different journey. He has a different message that he is taking, and it's the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he did it boldly. There were still uh, some whose minds were set in unbelief. They didn't want to accept the things that Paul was teaching. And so they went about speaking evil of him and about the gospel that he was preaching. So Paul just, uh, decided that preaching in the synagogue was no longer profitable. And so he moved uh, his ministry, his teaching and preaching uh, to the hall of Tyrannus. And there he spoke daily about God and about God's word. Now, for two years, Paul continues in this way of ministry. And the scripture tells us in Acts chapter 19, verse 10, so that all that dwelt, all they, excuse me, all they that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord both Jews and Greeks. So everybody in Asia got reached with the gospel message through the efforts of the Apostle Paul. Now that's some ministry. 
that that's a that's something you just don't see much anymore that anybody can say not even uh, uh for a city that that we can say that everybody in the city of louisville has heard the message of jesus christ so this, is, this that was a great thing that paul was able to do acts 19 and verse 11 uh, continues there and says and god wrought special miracles by the hands of paul and so not only was he preaching the gospel but he was also performing miracles god was working with him mightily and uh many uh great miracles were being accomplished healings uh demon possessed people were being uh set free from the demonic powers and many other things that were being done under the hands of paul Whenever the power of God begins to operate and miracles are being performed, there will be people who want to get in on the action. They're not wanting to get in there for the benefit of the ones that are needing the help, but they want to get in there for their own uh, profit and their own benefit. And so this happened when a, some anointed cloths were sent out from the Apostle Paul to sick people and people possessed of devils uh, and they were healed and uh, or the possession uh, the possessed person was delivered from their oppression and some of the exorcists that there were in the town saw this and thought that they could make profit by doing the same thing so they proclaimed over some that had uh, evil spirits saying to them we adjure thee by Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they thought because they heard Paul say that, that they too would be able to get away with using God's name and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in such a devious manner. There was a, a Jewish man named Sceva who was chief of the priest. And he had seven sons and they got the idea to cast out some devils. They decided if Paul can do it, we can do it. So they found a possessed man. And they didn't realize what they were getting into. But they found this man who was possessed of the devil. And they went to the man and they cried over him, We adjure thee by Jesus whom Paul preached. And in Acts chapter 19, verse 15 and 16, it tells us what happened. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? I heard someone say one time, there can't be anything more devastating to a person claiming to be a child of God than for the devil not to know who you are. We need to make sure the devil knows who we are. But he didn't know who these guys were that were proclaiming uh, to be something that they weren't. And so then, after he had answered them, the scripture tells us that the man uh, that had the spirit leaped on them and beat them within an inch of their lives. And uh, he tore their clothes off of them. Uh, and he sent them away running. One demon-possessed man beats and chases out seven other full-grown men. And they left wounded and bleeding and naked and no doubt ashamed. And when the news was made known to all the inhabitants there in Ephesus of just what had happened here, the Bible tells us that great fear fell on them. But in addition to that, that fear, the scripture also tells us that the Lord Jesus was magnified. Many people became believers because of what they saw. Let me tell you something tonight. When you try to cast out devils using God's name, but without faith, instead of you running out the devil, the devil will run you out. You better be careful when you try to do something in your own ability. 
So before Paul left Ephesus now, he, uh, he traveled to Macedonia there. And there was a certain man named Demetrius. And Demetrius was a silversmith. And what he did was he made idols for the people. Well, you see, they, was, they were steeped in idolatry. And they had idols uh, for everything. They had gods for all kind of things. And so Demetrius was a man that made a lot of money making idols and selling them uh, to people. And so the Apostle Paul's preaching against idolatry was starting to hurt his business as well. So he decided that he was going to take this out on Paul by starting a riot against Paul. There were others who were hurt financially, but Paul's teaching, or by Paul's teaching, and along with Demetrius, they all got together and they incited a riot. Now, Paul's boldness almost got him into trouble here because he wanted to get right out there in the crowd and probably do some rebuking and some uh, laying on of hands <laughs> however he wanted to lay his hands on them. Uh, but Paul wanted to get in the mix of it. But uh, the people that were with him uh, held him back. They wouldn't let him. The other disciples wouldn't let him get out there because they were afraid that some of the, the mob would want to kill him. And no doubt they probably would have tried. But there were many different Jewish leaders, including a man by the name of Alexander, who happened to be a clerk of the town, that they, these men reasoned with the mob and helped quiet down the riot. And shortly after the riot, Paul left for Macedonia. As he traveled to Macedonia and through Achaia, he encouraged the churches there. When he came to Greece, he spent three months there and then planned on sailing back to Jerusalem. But he was forced to change his plans when it was discovered that there was a plot by the Jews against Paul. So Paul changed his plans and decided to go back through Macedonia to travel on to Jerusalem. This way brought him through towns that he had visited before, such as Berea, Thessalonica, and Philippi. And traveling with Paul were many companions from various churches, which gave him some protection uh, as he traveled along. So he had a, a larger group now than he had had on any of his previous journeys. And Paul and his uh, party traveled at uh, Troas, we talked about that a little bit last week, and he was preaching in a house. And while he was preaching, there was a young man that was sitting in a window on the third uh, floor of this house where he was preaching. And while he was preaching, the young man fell out of the window. And when they found him, he was dead. But Paul raised him to life again. So this was another great miracle accomplished at the hands of the Apostle Paul through the power of God working in him. Now Paul had a, a great desire to reach Jerusalem by Pentecost. So after leaving Troas, he walked to Azos and then sailed past Ephesus, he sent word to the elders from Ephesus to meet him in Miletus, and there he encouraged the elders and commended them, letting them know that he would not be seeing them again, since he knew that imprisonment and maybe death was waiting for him when he got to Jerusalem. Now from there, Paul and his companions sailed uh, towards Syria. They arrived at Tyre and stayed with some of the disciples there 
who encouraged Paul not to go to Jerusalem. They were concerned about the apostle. They knew or they felt in their hearts that there was so much more that Paul could do for God and for the church. And so they encouraged him not to go. Then Paul continued on his journey after having been encouraged uh, by many there in Tyre. And then from there, Paul traveled to Caesarea and stayed with Philip. If you recall back in our studies uh, that Philip was uh, where uh, Peter went, the house, uh, or Philip was the, uh, excuse me, Philip was the uh, uh, apostle that uh, uh, had been left to minister. And he, he stayed in his house there when he got there uh, at uh, Philippi. And then there was a prophet by the name of Agabus and he came to Paul and told him of the affliction that he would face in Jerusalem I think we may have spoke about this a little bit last week about prophets being in the church uh, and how some feel that prophets had their ministry in the Old Testament alone but they weren't for the the, the new church the, the church that Jesus established but we find different uh, scripture passages that show us that they were uh, very much active. And this prophet named Agabus uh, told Paul what was going to happen to him when he got to uh, Jerusalem. So Paul had a decision to make. Many were pleading with him not to go to Jerusalem. And in Acts 21, 13, we hear what Paul answered them. Then Paul answered, what are you doing? weeping and breaking my heart for i am now ready not only to be imprisoned but to even die in jerusalem for the name of the lord jesus so paul then traveled to jerusalem and was greeted by his brothers in christ he told the church about all that god had been doing among the gentiles and all the stories that Paul told the church were encouraging to them. They were able to see uh, how the ministry was progressing among the Gentiles. And they realized that uh, there was no end to what God could do uh, with the Gentiles. But then some of the Jews from Asia that had tried to uh, incite that riot against Paul, they came and they stirred up trouble once again and this time Paul is arrested there are some who believe that Paul had a fourth missionary journey such a journey is not recorded in the book of Acts in fact Acts ends with Paul's imprisonment for a while and most likely after that he continued to travel possibly establishing new churches and encouraging ones he had established on previous journeys. After Paul's imprisonment in Rome that we just spoke about, he began to write letters to the churches. In these letters, we can learn about some of the places that he went and activities that, were, uh, that went on during his so-called fourth missionary journey. These letters are what we know as 1st and 2nd Timothy and also the book of Titus. He also spoke of his desire to go to Spain. And while there is no evidence that he did ever go to Spain, it is possible that such a trip did take place during this time frame. Now, during this period of time, Paul may have gone to Crete where he established a church and left Titus in charge to help that church grow. So these things could all be part of a fourth missionary journey that is not actually uh, described that way in Scripture. But Paul also traveled in Asia as well. Now, this is after his third journey. 
we're talking about. He also traveled in Asia. And in 2 Timothy, he talks about having to leave Thromephus, I think is the way you say that, uh, because he was sick. See, Paul wasn't immune to sickness or, or problems. And so he got sick and he had to leave. And in the book of Philemon, Paul mentioned how he hoped he would be able to visit in Colossae. If he did, it may have been following his visit to Ephesus. Macedonia and Achaia are also mentioned in 1 Timothy, Macedonia in 1 Timothy, and Achaia in 2 Timothy. Paul was once again in prison in Rome. We don't know when he uh, was arrested, but we do know that Nero was the uh, Roman emperor at the time, and he did not like Christians. And Paul wrote 2 Timothy while he was imprisoned in Rome. Shortly after 2 Timothy was written, Paul was beheaded there in Rome. When we read about Paul's life, we could be greatly encouraged by all that he was able to accomplish. When our life is dedicated to God, amazing things can happen. Jesus told his disciples, greater things than these shall ye do because I go to my Father. So throughout the, the Acts of the Apostles, and Paul's letters, we hear him over and over again saying, if God wills. Paul had a lot of plans himself, but he was always willing to surrender his will to the will of God. Many great things, as we have said, were accomplished at the hands of the Apostle Paul. And I've often believe that there is no limit to what can be accomplished if you don't care who gets the credit. I think that's a problem we have in the church today. Too many people are looking to get the credit for what God is doing. And we need to be more like the Apostle Paul. Speak boldly, listen to the voice of God, follow the direction of the Spirit and be ready to yield to His will whenever He speaks to us. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope that you have enjoyed this study on the, uh, the journeys of the Apostle Paul. It's been a, a joy for me to be able to present these to you. I ask you to Consider joining us Sunday morning at 1045 at Church Alive. We'll be gathering there to worship the Lord. And just a little information for you, I will be ministering in the Word this Sunday morning. And I'd love to look out in our congregation and see you there. So I hope that you will be able to join us 1045 Sunday morning. If you can't be there uh, we will be on Facebook, so uh, join us there. Remember to continue to pray for Pastor David and his family. We're trusting God for complete healing for him, and we just ask you to continue to hold him up in prayer. Thank you again for joining us tonight, and God bless you and your families.